A little drunk, but I'm alright. Cause I've been hanging with you, and it feels like love. Tell me if I'm wrong, cause it feels like love. Yeah, it feels like love. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh. Good to be back in Austin. Feels really good. This is one of my favorite times of the year. It's one of my favorite conferences of the year. Austin's treated me really good. I spoke here four years ago at my first South by Southwest, and it was there that I met executives at Keller Williams. And it was through Keller Williams I was able to quit my corporate job and go all in on my own. So shout out to Keller Williams and shout out to Austin. Let's see where Hertz is at. What brings you into town? I'm here for South by Southwest. Right we're doing a documentary called The Business of South by Southwest for Entrepreneur Magazine. And we're also working with Hertz. So I'll be taking over their Instagram account over the next few days. So if you nice. go onto Instagram and look up Hertz, you'll see me on there sharing like all the fun stuff happening on, at man. South by. It's going to be a busy weekend. We're going to do interviews here at South by Southwest. I think I'm going to go with the Escalade. And I've never driven one before. So this should be fun. Nice. This is a beauty. Got the keys. Keys to success. Let's load up our luggage and be on our way, shall we? This is our vehicle for the weekend. We have a beautiful Escalade. Thanks to Hertz. We're going to take this out all over Austin and share with all of you everything that's South by Southwest has to offer. Stay tuned. To get to Austin, the first thing that you want to do is get your badge and avoid the lines. This right here is how you network. Find people in a group, bring them all together, discover common interests, and then connect online. So the connection stays after the conference ends. I'm going to show you how easy it is to network at South by Southwest and grow your connections on LinkedIn without business cards. On LinkedIn, go to, go to the icon where you see the two people and then hit find nearby. And then you can just go through and literally just add people. How cool is that? Yeah, so I just invited several of you. I never carry business cards on me. And I come to these conferences and people ask me for my business card. And I just say, hey, pull out your phone and let's connect on LinkedIn. What are like some good things that people need to know? Like we've got barbecue in there, we got like pedicabs to get around. Obviously, like there's free food and drinks galore. There's parties. I think one of the things to remind people at an event like South by Southwest is, you know, what's unique about it, um, or relatively unique. It's not just startup people. It's not just style people. It's not just sports people. It's not just food people. It's all of these people put together. My name is Hugh Forrest. I am Chief Programming Officer at South by Southwest. That means that uh, I answer a lot of emails and only ignore a few of them. I have worked at South by Southwest much too long. That's my standard answer. I started uh, South by Southwest in 1989 when it was a music only event. I was the uh, first paid employee. Someone told me I should call myself the founding employee. I'm not sure that's really a word or a term, but it sounds kind of fun. So this is your 30th anniversary? Uh, something like that. Something like that. <laughs> it only seems longer. <laughs> How has the festival changed from 1989 to 2019? Well, it's obviously just gotten a lot bigger. It's gone from a music only event to an event that covers film and technology and food and style and government. Um, it's gone from being housed in one building to 
we have panels and presentations in five or six downtown hotels, but what hasn't changed amidst all that growth is a strong, strong focus on creativity. Our mission statement now is the same as it was back in 1987 or 1989. It's we help creative people achieve their goals. That's what South by Southwest is all about. Creativity, we celebrate creativity. The fact that it happens in a very creative city is one of the things that makes it work. Future, it'll be interesting to see how events like South by Southwest um, change and react as, you know, uh, augmented reality and virtual reality becomes more sophisticated. Can we do more events from the comfort of our home and feel like we're in Austin or in Salt Lake City or in LA? Yeah, maybe so, maybe no. I tend to think that there's something that people still like about connecting in real time. All that said, if South by Southwest continues to focus on creativity, I think our future is, is uh, very bright. Uh, people are uh, love that focus on creativity, and in a future that is increasingly automated, where AI has an even more significant role, creativity has never been more important. It's the thing that makes humans humans and can separate us from the machines and the algorithms. The primary reason why people come to South by Southwest is for the access. By coming to this event, you're gonna be able to get into really exclusive parties, VIP experiences, you're gonna be able to rub elbows with movers and shakers. And someone last night at a um, small get together at the JW Marriott put it best, you're coming here and spending about $1,500 on a badge. You're spending somewhere between three to four grand on travel when you factor in your flight, your hotel, food, all those expenses. So to come here, the average person is spending about five grand, if not more, depending on where you stay. So if you're gonna spend that kind of money, you're coming here with a purpose. And that purpose is to do business. You're not coming here just to hang out and have a good time in Austin. Granted, you will have a good time in Austin because it's a fun place and there's a fun vibe, but you're coming here with a business purpose and it's that access that people are seeking. This right here is how you growth hack a conference. We have this beautiful, spacious Escalade and we parked right in front of the LinkedIn studio where we're about to record carpool content. Stay tuned. The opportunity to learn about LinkedIn learning, the opportunity to learn about our insights, and the opportunity to pimp your profile or rock your profile. I call it pimp Do you have profile. experts here that are helping we have with experts uh... who, on each corner that can help you with either updating your profile, getting your profile picture retaken if you have you're not so happy with your profile picture. Um, and also the insights corner, which I think is really the most interactive piece of this. Um, we use LinkedIn learning data to be able yeah. to showcase how skills are rising, how it's changing, how things are moving around. And you can see that virtually awesome. through the high moments. What I've seen change is that it's grown clearly. Um, but I think also the idea there, when, you know, at least from what I saw, was really um, this collision of different types of people because it wasn't spread out over so many days. Now it's spread out quite a bit, although this might even be a better format. We just need to learn how to take advantage. But because you were so compact in such a compact space, there was a, uh, a real collision of different types of thinkers, thoughts, ideas. Uh, that came together. The reality is, is if you come down here and just go and drink and party, then that's not really on the event. That's kind of on you, man. So there is, I, I, I mean, I, you know, there is a huge, um, there is a large contingent of folks that are trying to drive innovation in new and exciting ways. And just have to make it a point. They're not going to show up at these curated events. That's not where you're going to find those where things. You find them? And I'm sorry, it's not easy. You have to go. You want to know where you find them? You go to the registrant's tent. Because usually they're the people who this is their very first time. They've never been here before. They don't know what else to do. And they show up at the registrant's after party. The real essence of South Bayou is artists sleeping in their cars, coming here, because this is where the music industry descended on, in hopes that they could get heard and become a mega star and pursue their passion and their dreams. And that spilled over to film and spilled over to interactive and so when we came to interactive the goal was to continue to accelerate that platform make that happen and I still think that happens and can happen here the one thing is that we become segregated and siloed and isolated and we the brand guys spend their time here the tech guys spend their time here you know the film guys here the and never the twain show meet and that weird serendipitous of collision of different thinking and ideas that is 
really, it's the only way you make great stuff is when things rub up against each other and there's friction and there's difference. And in the absence of that, yes, it just becomes another place where you can go get a drink on Twitter's dime or, you know, pay a lot of money for a badge. But if you treat it and remember that that's the thing, you can turn this into a very valuable opportunity this for yourself. This is why I want to sit down with you because you're perhaps the most passionate person about South by Southwest I know. This thing means a lot to me, man. The nature of South by Southwest is that it is constantly evolving. I mean, that's that's just what makes it so special. And it's also what makes it so uh, interesting for conversation. So you have people who say every single year that South by Southwest has jumped a shark. Uh, but yet every year it's still, there's more hotels being built, there's more and more people coming, there's more and more traffic. Uh, that change is actually one of the reasons I love this event so much. It keeps you plugged into what's relevant and cultural now, but also plugs you into what's on the horizon, what's on the minds of, of the people that you follow or the people that you respect or the people that you need to know. Uh, and then also there's the artistry component to it that, that doesn't change as much because it's really about who's, who's popular, but it's also about who you've loved in the past who's here as well. And that artistry component is, I think, what makes South by Southwest so special. Uh, and, and real quick, the reason why I say that is because I think the world needs more artistry in everything that we do. Speak to that, why is that? I think that we, 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 tend, to, uh, we tend to take a, a rigid approach to a lot of the things that we do. We've, we've got rules, we've got processes, we've got management systems, we've got sort of rearing uh, from our childhood years in terms of how we were, we were taught and what the standards were and how, how you measured success. And uh, I think the artistry component just sort of allows you to just be free to be inspired by something or someone uh, and to express that in your own unique reaction. Uh, and that, that, if you think about it, is the source of innovation. Back in the day, and I know Bonin would agree to this, I think back in the 2006 years, we used to call it, and still do, the, the, uh, the spring, uh, geek spring break. Uh, so this is where the, the geeks would come for their spring break. And uh, Look, it's a, it's a lot of things. You certainly can make it whatever you want. You can make it a corporate branded sponsored thing. You have all of these cool activations. I think 2018 was the big year that Westworld created a Westworld yeah. in, in Austin and, and, and just stole the show. Uh, we're sitting across from the LinkedIn studio, which took over a, a restaurant and bar as its, its headquarters. Uh, it, is, it is everything. And you get to curate your own experience. And I think that's what makes South by Southwest so interesting as well, is that it's all of those things, but it's also, you, we're two blocks from 6th Street where there's probably, you know, 10 bands playing their hearts out right now, you know, hoping to, to get some f folks to, to listen to them on Spotify and maybe go see a live show in the future. Historically, South by Southwest, the interactive part of the festival, which is where we're at, has been designed for tech companies to come out with their latest innovations. Like for example, the last couple of years, there's been a heavy influence of AI, AR, VR. A couple of years before that, it was you know the social media craze of like Snapchat, Foursquare launched here 10 years ago. And it's always been viewed as the go-to event if you work in tech. Now the other side of the uh, festival is music as well as movies. So it's a, about a two week conference and the first part is interactive slash digital marketing then after that is music and movies and again going back to the going back to the consumer that comes to south by southwest if you're spending money to come here it's because you're either looking for funding in your business you are looking to perhaps advance in your career and find a better job you're looking to grow your business and find new clients, or you're just coming here really to learn, so that way you can take that knowledge back to the company that you work for. And there's also the partnership aspect as well. So here, you'll find different companies, different brands uh, that make for good partners in your business. Like in our, in our case, we're doing a, an event tomorrow in partnership with WeWork, where we work partners. We are global partners of theirs, so this gives us an opportunity for us to do an event and collaborate with them at one of the biggest festivals in the entire world. I'm here with the man, Jay-Z. Hey,
further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. We have a, a great panel lined up for you with Vayner Sports. We're going to start here with a round of introductions with my main man to uh, to the far left, Mr. Walter Powell. Walt? Hey, how you guys doing? My name is Walter Powell. Played in the NFL for four years and now I started my own political tech company called Politiscope. Justin Jean Grande, EVP Vayner Sports. Oversee all the marketing and endorsements and all the off the field activities for all of our roster live out in LA and uh, enjoying this Austin weather, so appreciate it. My name is Josh Martin, uh, going into my seventh year in the league, finished up my contract with the Jets, current free agent, excited for that this upcoming week. We'll We're see. very excited for we'll that. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm working on a cool project called Making America. I'm excited to share. All right, so the Brand Summit just wrapped up. We're getting ready to head out and go over to Brian Solis's book signing party. Then we're going to the sprinkler party. Our event was amazing. Thank you so much to We Work in Hertz. We learned a couple of things along the way, like we need more food, more beer, especially when you're driving people to get there right at two o'clock and doing a two hour event versus a three hour event is definitely the way to go. The blue, blue, the blue one. Blue one, sorry, I'll give you that. Sweet. I'm not gonna put on you. I think it's What's the difference? I have no idea. I'm um, but if it's blue, it's good. I spent the last decade working in corporate marketing for Winn-Dixie, Save-A-Lot, LinkedIn, and BMC running social media. I was one of Sprinkler's first clients, so I know this platform very well. And you know, during my time in corporate America, I always felt like my potential wasn't being leveraged to the fullest. I always felt like, I know I'm good at what I do, but I'm not being utilized in the manner that I should be utilized. Okay. And yeah, this, sucks. this sucks. This sucks. I'm a young guy, I have a lot to offer, I'm really passionate. And if the people above me aren't gonna listen to me, then you know what, I have to, I have to find an outlet for people to listen to me, and that's social media. That's YouTube, that's LinkedIn, that's vlogs, that's writing for Entrepreneur, for Inc. Magazine. That's basically finding partners like Sprinkler and being like, look, this is what I know really well, and I've got a voice and you've got a platform for me to distribute that voice, what can we do? And the power of partnerships, if you really wanna grow your brand and get to that next level, you have to tap into partnerships. So I knew that I was never gonna work as a corporate employee for the rest of my life, but corporations are who pays the bills. So as I sat in these offices, I started saying to myself, well, what's the value I bring? What can I do, what can I take to companies at scale and use my talents and my knowledge to sell? And by doing things like launching employee advocacy, launching influencer programs, having a community management team that I manage, being able to educate executives on how to grow their brand. Those are all products yes. that my company, Gill Media, sells today and services that we offer to companies. Yeah. So I knew like, oh, I got the whole sprinkler thing down pat. I know Spreadfast, I know all these platforms. This is what I've been doing for the last 10 years. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just take a leap of faith and go out on my own Let's do it. Yeah. and just do it. Yeah. And I haven't looked back since in two years. We just bounced yeah, from uh, from another event. Yeah, it's perfect. Man. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Brian's in there doing his thing. Sweet. It's so cool. It's Excellent. Cool. It's good to see. I'm about to go in. Likewise. Can I get a hug? Let's do it, bro. What's up, brother? Congratulations. And thank you, man. Thank, thank you. you for inspiring me, for motivating me, for teaching me. Oh well. You know the thing about motivation and inspiration. I appreciate that, right? Like I have mad respect for what you do. Is that it's uh, it's most effective when it's two ways. Of course. Right? So you, thank you. You inspire me and you motivate me, right? And also, our conversations that we have, like last night, you know, when we were getting real. But every time we get real. Every night before. Yeah. Yeah. That, I walk away from those, dude, with, with mad depth. Say it. So, I, those, are, those are valuable pillars in my life. So I think of you, sure, as, a, as Carlos Gill, but also, I really, I really enjoy our friendship. I don't let a lot of people in, so. Thank you. Thank Likewise, you. Bro. Thank you. I appreciate you. Congratulations on the book. Man. This is motivating right here, man. Just seeing this come together. I mean, you know, the fact that it's closing time and it's still packed is ridiculous. I mean, you know, everybody's got every place to be, and this was, I mean, this place is packed. 
Yeah. Starting at 4.15. Oh, I, I can't even. I was really nervous for a minute. Yeah, I heard. It We're going to swoop out. I okay. know you got dinner. Okay. Hopefully I see you a little bit later on at the JW or wherever you end up. Yeah. So just um, just, just text me. I got I to gotta do that dinner, but I think it ends at 10. Cool. So you got it, bro. we'll close out the night again. Cool. You got it. Thank you for being you. Likewise, bro. Thank you for bringing the best version of me out. For real. We're working on it for both of us. 